Hi everyone, my name is Matthias. I'm a structure engineer working for Schleichbergermann Partner in New York City. And today I'm gonna to talk about our bridge project in Toronto, Canada. To give a quick overview of the project, as I said, the project is in Toronto, but more specifically, east of the downtown area in the Portlands. And currently, as you see here on the right side, it is a very industrial area and you have the John River coming in in a 90 degree turn, which causes seasonal flooding in this area. To prevent flooding, the organization Waterfront Toronto is planning to naturalize the river mouth and by doing so also creating a large residential, commercial and recreational area and also revitalizing the entire neighborhood. With this naturalization, we are also creating a new island and to connect this island to also the downtown area and the further portlands, three new bridge crossings are planned. Our involvement was to design six new bridges for these three new crossings and each of these three crossings basically then has two new bridges. You can also see um, a rendering here from like the apartments area how it will look like in the future. For each of the locations we have two bridges as mentioned, one supporting vehicular traffic while the other one supports light rail transit and bus transit. We also have a large sidewalk on the vehicular bridge um, supporting or giving enough space for pedestrians, bikes and programming. Our intent was to have a structure that follows the flow of forces and uses novel fabrication techniques. We started looking at single curved laser cut plates in our initial design, but then also got feedback and input from the client and community. And we find our model to have a more open impression and to improve also the views from and at the bridge. The final des design also incorporates doubly curved uh, plates residing in a smooth shell surface. We use parametric design, specifically Grasshopper and Sophistic, the FE software, to model the bridges and to easily go through many possible geometries while also considering our constraints, such as the clear height of the bridge and below the bridge. Here you see four of the six bridges, which is the part for one phase. There's a second phase where the missing two bridges are being added. While all bridges have different dimensions, um, they're all the same design principles and they form a family of bridges. The Sherry North Bridge um, on the right side here is the shortest of our bridges and has one span of 50 meter length. The Sherry South Bridge has a larger span in the center of 50 meters and two smaller side spans and the Commissioner Street Bridge has two equal center spans of 50 meters and two smaller side spans on the side. The bridge is following the principle of a tight arch with tension and compression. However, instead of having concentrated members, the forces are distributed over a larger area and allowing us for having very slender shell plates. Furthermore, the forces are linked together through the deck, resulting in only having vertical reaction forces under gravity loads and giving us the opportunity to minimize the abutments. Here you see the elements of the bridge. As mentioned, you have the shell itself in compression, which is then the two sides linked together um, at the top to also reduce the buckling length. Then you have hang up fin plates, which not only suspend the deck um, from the shell, but also provide um, lateral stiffness and stiffness for local buckling. The deck is then made out of steel cross beams and a concrete deck. Where the, whereas the sidewalk have an autotropic deck to reduce the overall weight of the bridge. Currently, there are not too many fabricators making doubly curved plates. So we consulted CIG, which is a company in the Netherlands, which has as background the manufacturing of ships. So they're already familiar with like doubly curved plates. So the bending process then, as you see on the left side, was done with like a single press and the plate were just held down on the sides and uh, you see, you can basically do it with one person. So it's like fairly simple process, but still super accurate at the end. The bridge was then fabricated and assembled in Halifax by Joe Beely, and then shipped on a barge, as you see here on the right side to Toronto to its final position. So at this point, there are two bridges already arrived in Toronto and the missing two for now are still in fabrication and should come soon. 
Right. The design was a collaboration between SPP, Grimshaw and Intuitive. Okay, I want to thank everyone for their attention. I hope you enjoyed it and I'm happy to answer any questions now or also feel free to reach out to me per email. Thank you.